Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, most of my talk was going to be demo, but uh, my demo system crashed and burned on Wednesday. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's Docker's fault. <laughs> I was using it was all up on a, a cloud service with Docker, and um, I was using Dev uh, Device Mapper, which apparently is not uh, recommended for Docker in a production system. Uh, and my hard drive filled up for some other issue that uh, not related to what I was doing, and the device mapper and all the images died and got corrupt. And I don't know how I'm going to get them back, but anyway, I I so on Thursday I went and redid it <laughs> just to have something to have at least some part of a demo, but it's not as uh, complete as what I had originally. So. Tonight I'm going to be talking about guacamole, which is a, uh, it's basically a, a web-based uh, uh, remote control, remote desktop type tool. Uh, can I get the next slide, please? <coughs> yeah, so <coughs> this is not new stuff. Everybody's used these sort of remote control tools these days. Uh, most of them cost money. Most of them go through some other web service. The main reason why you need something like this is because everybody sits behind a net and you don't have direct access to the box that you're trying to control. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, you don't want your the person that you, you don't want to always muck around with uh, open firewall routers and things like that. Uh, VNC requires setup and requires uh, fixed and of course you require a fixed connection point so if you are trying to connect to a machine that's the other side of a net server you need some sort of point that you that is stable and codable at the at the internet point you can't have like a dynamic ip or something like that next slide please so guacamole is a gui based remote control tool it supports a number of different remote control uh, remote desktop type protocols, including RDP, SSH, and VNC. Uh, it's a multi-user website, so you can have the one website that controls that everybody uses, and each one has their own separate account, and you can control that this particular remote control connection has is allowed to be used by these users, and these remote control connections are allowed by those users. Uh, <clears throat> So it's intended as a an art sort of remote control portal. So you could put this server inside, just inside your in your DMZ or something like that, and you could connect to the website. And then from that from that uh, guacamole server, you can then connect to all the other servers in your in your office network or in your in your work network. Um, <clears throat> but the main reason that got me interested in it is it now supports reverse VNC. So. Traditionally, when you're connecting to VNC, you have the VNC server that's sitting on the machine that you want to control, that's going to whose desktop you're remote controlling into, and you connect your VNC viewer to that VNC server. In a reverse type connection, you set up your VNC viewer into a, a listening mode, and then you tell the, the VNC server connects back to that VNC, uh, VNC viewer. So it's basically exactly what it says, it's going the reverse direction. This means that if the machine that I'm trying to uh, connect to, that I'm trying to do a remote desktop to, doesn't have to be in a fixed location, only I have to be in a fixed location. So I have my, in this case, the website that's up on Amazon Web Services, and that's my fixed location, and someone with a VNC viewer can connect back to that, and I then can then see my their desktop. Uh, next slide, please. So <clears throat> Guacamole is a Tomcat web app. It'll run off, uh, has a database backend. I get the impression that it used to have an XML configuration file, but uh, it seems that all the modern stuff is in the database. And it has a part of it is that it has a Guacamole daemon. If you go to the Guacamole website, they 
have their installation procedure and that sort of thing. And the installation procedure they seem to be pushing these days is as a Docker image. So these are the three Docker containers that you need to get. The Guacamole uh, Tomcat web app and the Guacamole daemon, they provide the, SQL, the database. You can pull out of anywhere. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so the Docker images are available and you can just use those. Uh, and uh, when you start the, the Guacamole uh, Tomcat web app, it will connect to the database. And if it's not, doesn't find any information in that database, it will then set up the database schema accordingly. So it's not something you have to do separately. Uh, next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> it's not all 100% good because there are a few little things. The um, copy and paste, it, it, it has a few quirks. Uh, I think the main thing that was throwing me was that if I copied from my machine, <clears throat> so, sorry, from the desktop, my local desktop, and tried to paste into the remote desktop, it didn't paste straight away. Uh, you, do you mind switching to the uh, guacamole website. Yeah, that was the one, that one, that one. <clears throat> so that's a guacamole website there. And if you click on one of those, just click on any of them, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And just press uh, control alt shift. So <clears throat> Whenever you're connected to a real machine, that web page will actually show you their desktop. And you can see here when you do the Control Alt Shift, uh, you get your your menu options here. And this here is your copy and paste window. So if you want to paste something into the remote machine, you first paste it into this text box, and then it's uh, then it's available for pasting on the remote desktop. And if you copy from your desktop, it doesn't automatically paste it into here. So <clears throat> that was the bit that threw me. But it, as long as you remember that you've got to go through this, it works pretty good. Back the other way. Sorry? And back the other way as well, yes. It goes yes, it goes into this box, and you can then paste in. Um, <clears throat> in one direction, it works better than the other. I think if you're c copying from your desk, so if I can remember this right, if I'm copying from from my desktop, and I just do you know, copy some text on my desktop, it'll put it in here automatically, and I'll be able to paste it on the remote desktop automatically. But if I'm going the other direction, it'll only come up into here, and then I've got to select here and copy it out of there, or something like that. So one direction works smoother than the other. So this is for text, right? Uh, yes. Otherwise yes, it's for text. And not for, my uh, for what, sorry? Well, a Word document basically is text. Um, formatting. Well, if you're copying images, you could probably just do a screenshot anyway. But yes, I, I see what you mean. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't copying formatted text, so I can't answer that. I don't know. I haven't test tried that. Uh, can we go back to slides, please? Yeah, so the the other thing that it does offer a file transfer. Uh, <clears throat> the file transfer wasn't very well documented. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how to do it, because what it was, um, what you're basically doing with the file transfer is you set up your uh, set up an SFTP site, and you configure that into the Guacamole for that uh, that connection, and then files get when you copy files and to and from and that sort of thing it goes to that ftp site and then you drag it out of your browser and it'll drag out to your desktop um <clears throat> but vnc not all vnc clients support file transfers so i believe that's why it didn't work for me for the vnc connection uh because the vnc uh server that i was using on the remote machine uh did not support file transfers um, <clears throat> doing the reverse VNC 
uh, that was another bit that wasn't very well documented. It, it is a very new feature in it, so it's not. Maybe that's why it wasn't very well documented. I did find that uh, some of the things that I couldn't find in the documentation when I was writing these slides today, I actually, or yesterday when I was setting back up the uh, Guacamole server, I did find that I they were there now. So maybe the documentation is just in the process of catching up. But um, <clears throat> the reverse VNC is not settable in the GUI. Uh, you have to actually go into the database and add the parameters manually. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's another little drawback. Um, and some firewalls will block even outgoing ports. Uh, I believe this is what was affecting me when I tried to connect to some of my customers. Um, <clears throat> so even though they're making the connection back to my server, it still didn't work very well. It still didn't work, refused. Uh, and I believe it's because their firewalls were blocking outgoing connections as well. Uh, two things I was looking into working around that, which I didn't get too much time to, to investigate too much further, is first of all, making the uh, remote port that the VNC server is connecting back to, that, that is my VNC viewer run uh, on port 80 instead of port 6000 or something like that. Uh, that would probably help because then at least port 80 is always open. Uh, but even then, sometimes they have port 80 configured to go, always go through a proxy server and then you still have issues, of course. So the other thing I was looking at is that there are tools called uh, that uh, do HTTP tunnels, whereby you can actually set up using HTTP, standard HTTP, a tunnel that will forward a port from one point to another. So the, one of the ones I was looking at was um, uh, HTT Tunnel or HTT, I think it's actually a GNU tool uh, called HTTP Tunnel or something like that. And the idea is that you would have a website and on your machine or on the machine that you want to have the port tunneled from, uh, you go to that website and with that tool and you connect to that tool and it will forward that port across to the HTTP website and there it'll come back out as, as a port again. Um, next slide, please. So the additional things that I was setting up, <clears throat> and this is the bit that I didn't really get to do, redo again after my site broke. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to set up the SSL certificate in Tomcat. That, main reason I wanted to do that <clears throat> is not only for security, but it also means that my website itself doesn't have to run on port 80. I can run my uh, VNC uh, listener viewer on port 80. Uh, oops. Um, I did set up an SFTP site to try to get the uh, uh, file transfers to work. Uh, but like I said, the most VNC view, uh, most VNC tools do not support file transfer, so that didn't go too well for me. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it was a little confusing on that. Um, and then I had to set up, this is the bit that I had to put into the database. Uh, you had to put the database entries where you had uh, uh, reverse VNC equals true and timeout of 3,000 3, or 30,000 just because you want to give them time. Usually you're connecting to the server, the server's already waiting there. So, you know, time out of five, uh, two or three seconds is fine. But if you're kind of VNC listener, a VNC viewer listening, you don't know how, you know, your client might take a while to run the command or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> and then of course, make sure the ports are open. And I also found uh, Tiger VNC, which is the one I was using, Actually, if you get the files for Windows and you, uh, what I did is I've got the portable uh, Tiger VNC server for Windows and I found the executable from that. And I found that you could just take the executable and run the executable on its own without any of the other company files and it works fine. <coughs> uh, yep. And yeah, so I added those to the page originally, but that didn't work. As, as I said, that uh, site got corrupted. Um, can you change back to the VNC, the guacamole? 
Does anyone have a laptop here? No? Yeah. <clears throat> you wouldn't have uh, X11 VNC on there? Sorry? Oh, right. Probably not. No. I was going to, I was hoping someone would have a laptop. We could try it out. <clears throat> but basically, if you go to the, my menu at the top there, Robert, yep, and just go back home. So <clears throat> it'll show you screenshots of the last time you connected to the machine. Uh, and can you go to Robert at the top right there and settings? And then just go connections and incoming, just open it, uh, go back, cancel. Just hit the plus sign. And click on one of those reverse ones. There we go. So these are the settings you basically do. And as you can see, these settings are as they would be for a normal VNC. Uh, going from guacamole to the destination machine. Uh, and all you do is basically configure it as you would normally, but put localhost. And then in the actual database, you go to those settings for that connection and you just basically say, uh, put in the settings that this is a reverse VNC, and then pretty much it, it just works. Uh, and it'll just listen and wait for the connection. So you need to have the three components. You've got the website itself, the database, and you've got the guacamole daemon. It's the guacamole daemon that does the connection out to wherever or does the connection to listen for the, the incoming VNC server. So it's the one that you have to open the ports for. I don't know how much people have played around with Docker, but when you run a Docker image, uh, you've got to tell it what ports <coughs> you want to forward on to, to where. If you don't tell it the ports by default, it doesn't forward anything. It just has the uh, container running as a separate IP address, and you can have to specify the container IP to, to connect to it. So when you got the when you do these uh, run these containers, you have to make sure that the guacamole daemon, which is the one that does the listening on port six thousand in this case, or six thousand and one in this case, you have to make sure that it's got that uh, container is run with that port forwarded onto the physical machine, so then people connecting on port 6001 on the physical machine will get to port 6000 on the container. And uh, unfortunately, that's about it, because I don't have access to the actual box to, to play around with. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, I would have shown you some more parameters and how it was set up. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Any questions? Yeah? So can I read that? the whole viewer thing works so inside your web browser. Yes. Yeah, so if you went back to the, uh, cancel that and go back to uh, under Robert, go back home. So if you go scroll down and go to one of the incoming and click on reverse or reverse one, clear down or whatever. So if you just hit reconnect, It'll just be waiting for a VNC server to connect. When the VNC server connects, you get that person's desktop. <clears throat> so normally it goes the other other way around. You hit connect, and uh, it will connect to the VNC server and display that desktop through the web browser. The only difference is that <clears throat> with the reverse, you're waiting for the connection rather than making the connection. Yep. Does it have a, can you chat? Sorry? Can you chat? Chat with the person on the uh, no, there's no sort of facilities for chat that I've seen. Okay. Yeah, Notepad. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that on a number of customers. <laughs> Even with TeamViewer, you end up doing that sort of thing. <clears throat> Usually, I still use the phone to talk to the customer, and then you know, the remote connections just so I can show them. <clears throat> can yeah, and it, it does allow multiple connections. If if I go to VNC, uh, the, the listener, <coughs> the connections is configured as a reverse connection, 
and I have it sitting there waiting on port 80 and someone connects to me, I see their desktop, someone else logged into Quark Molly as a different user can also go and say, listen to port 80 and someone else can connect and it'll be a totally separate session. So you can have multiple sessions there. Any other questions? Sorry, guacamole. I have no idea why they called it that. <coughs> when I tried it the first time, it worked pretty well. I was running again on the wet up in the cloud. So I was remote controlling this machine from this machine, but it was actually going from, from the cloud, through the cloud to do it. So it still would have been a remote connection in the true sense of the word. <clears throat> and I found it pretty quick. Um, I think with when I tried it with a, a Linux machine using X11 VNC, I found it a lot slower, a lot slower. So I don't know whether that's just, I, I have heard that VNC tends to be uh, inconsistent in how well it performs in that uh, sometimes it does pretty well other times it's a little slower um, I think the other issue that I had when I was testing it with x11 is I was actually doing it from the same machine so if you can imagine I have two monitors and I connect the browser on this monitor to my machine and then this monitor so in the web browser I see my whole desktop including the web browser, which is, you know, so you had like a little bit of inception going on. And I think that was probably the main reason why it was so slow. The other one is, yeah, okay, so, so it's usable, it's, it's usable to assist with this, but how about a, a, a question for normal user? Are they going to HQ or? <clears throat> when I was using it, like I said, it's, I, I did on, it was pretty performant. On what's to, Remote control in a Windows machine via VNC, it was pretty performant. <clears throat> yes. Well, again, if you if you had uh, say, for instance, you had this in your office net in your office. Uh, and you expose that website to the internet or something like that, then connecting to this site, you could then do a remote control desktop to a Windows machine or a remote shell to a, to a Linux box in your, in, your, in, your, in your office network. And you can configure the login credentials within the connection. So then all the people using that site, they don't have to know the individual login credentials for each of the machines that they're remote controlling because the connection remember that, remembers those settings. If you choose to use it that way, you can leave the credentials blank, in which case it's going to prompt you. But in, <clears throat> if you fill it in, then it's, then nobody needs to know what those credentials are. They only need to know the credentials to log into the Guacamole site, and then that's it. <clears throat> well, I guess that's about it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, does anybody have any talks they want to give in the next, you know, coming year while I'm up here? If you'd have something, come talk to me.